a little bit more to say, nothing too hard, but this will uh, nicely motivate where the class is going next. Uh, so the first major algorithmic design paradigm that we're going to discuss is divide and conquer algorithms and tools for analyzing their running time. And uh, let me just talk a little bit about a problem you all know very well, a problem you learned uh, how to solve a long time ago, which is suppose I give you two n-digit numbers and I ask you to multiply them. So maybe I give you the number is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. And I ask you to compute for me their product without using your calculator or computer. Okay. So, you know, in grade school, you learn how to do this. I'm wondering if there will be a year at which I can no longer make that assertion. <laughs> you know, because of calculators and computers and so on. But I think I'm safe for the moment. Pretty sure all of you learned an algorithm. They didn't call it an algorithm, probably. But, you know, you now would recognize that the procedure you were taught, the mechanical procedure, is in fact an algorithm. For multiplying two numbers. So let me ask a question, and I don't want a super precise answer to it, but just roughly. So if you think about that algorithm and you think about how it works, and you imagine that sort of adding two digits or multiplying two digits as one operation, roughly how many operations does that algorithm require to do the multiplication as a function of the number of digits n in each of the two numbers? How is it scaling? Yeah, I don't want an exact one. I just want sort of like a rate of growth in the back. Oh, n squared? n squared, good. Why? It's because basically, you know, you put this one under this one, and then you go through each of the numbers on the bottom, and you multiply it times each of the numbers on the top. Mm -hmm. Then there's some stray additions, but it turns out they don't matter. Okay, it's still going to be n squared overall. So, roughly, n squared basic operations. Where by basic operation, I mean you take one-digit numbers and you add them and multiply them. Okay? Now, if I do my job, I will have taught you the following mantra, which every algorithm designer should sort of have, okay? Which is, whenever someone has an algorithm that purports to do something, you should always immediately ask yourself, could I do better? Okay? I want you to never be satisfied with a proposed solution unless there's some convincing argument why you couldn't do better. Okay? And we'll see some examples of that as well. Okay? But I would like your Pavlovian response to an assertion of performance about an algorithm. Maybe I can do better than that. And I know I've made some progress. If you can think about something like the grade school algorithm for integer multiplication and ask yourself, could I do better than that? So we'll answer that question next week, but let's start exploring some ideas of how one might try to do better than the grade school algorithm. And believe it or not, we're going to think about recursive algorithms for multiplying numbers. Okay? I'm going to show you two. So here's recursive algorithm number one. All right, so to do recursion, you need to recurse on smaller subproblems. Okay? And so here, kind of the only notion of how big a problem is is sort of how many digits there are in a number. So we somehow have to break a, a big number into numbers that have fewer digits. So we're going to do that in what I claim is the obvious way. We're going to break 1, 2, 3, 4 into, in some sense, 12 and 34. We'll break this into, in some sense, 56 and 78. If you think about it a little bit, the most natural way to do that is as follows. You say, well, write x as 12 times 100. So I'll write that, whoops, let me write it in, uh, in general, not just for this example. But so you're going to write it as the first half of the number shifted, you know, by an appropriate factor of 10. So this would be like 12, A would be 12 times uh, 100 to get us to 1,200, plus B, in that case, would be 34. Same thing with Y. Okay? So 
eg a equals 12, b equals 34, c equals 56, d equals 78. And the key point here is for all of these numbers have only half as many digits. I'm assuming they have an even number of digits for simplicity. Okay? So whatever. I mean, you can do that if you want. It's not clear it buys us anything. But to explore this further, so what are we, what are we asked to do? We're being asked to multiply x times y. Right? This is the computational problem. Given x, given y, output x times y. So let's just expand what we have to compute in terms of this decomposition. So what would it be? Well, so you multiply all the terms out, and you get a 10 to the n AC, plus you get the cross terms, so that's 10 to the n over 2, times uh, AD plus BC, plus this final BD term. Okay? We're going to call this expression star. just staring at star, you realize it does pretty much translate rather directly into a recursive algorithm for computing x and y. And the reason is that because all of the non-trivial multiplications that remain involve only numbers with less than n digits. And that's really all you need for a recursive algorithm, so you recurse on smaller subproblems. So the idea is to recursively compute whatever we need. So what do we need to know in star? Well, we need to know AC, we need to know AD, BC, and BD. All right, so each of that is a multiplication of two n over two digit numbers, smaller subproblems. And then, after those recursive subcalls come back and we know the answers, then we just finish evaluating it in the obvious way. Okay, so all I have to do is add these two things together, that's easy. And then we just have to pad these things by zero, that's easy. And then we add them up again and that's also easy. Okay? So compute star in the obvious way. Now, so I wouldn't expect it to be completely obvious to all of you, but it will be, once we sort of get back into the groove in the next week or so, it will become obvious to you that this algorithm, first of all, is correct, okay, just by induction. Second of all, that it terminates, again, basically by induction, because you only recurse on smaller subproblems. What is totally not obvious is whether this thing will be super fast or sort of, you know, take a million years. Totally unclear, okay? And in particular, Totally unclear whether this is better or worse than the grade school algorithm you learned long ago. Whether the running time's dependence on the number of digits in these numbers is more, less, or equal to basically n squared. 